Okay, back to the story here. So what do we use public key cryptography for? Well, of course, we can use it the same way we use symmetric key cryptography. Okay, we can use it for confidentiality. I can encrypt the message, send it to you, you know, use your, your public key. I can encrypt the data that's stored, stored on my hard drive using my public key crypto system. It would take forever, but I could do it, okay, at least in principle. We'll see that um, authentication protocols use public key cryptography a lot. We'll talk about SSL, there's many others, SSH, IPsec, and so on use public key cryptography. Digital signatures, okay, now we already talked about integrity, right? How do we provide for integrity using symmetric ciphers? A Mac, okay, so you can compute a Mac and that's a way to get integrity using symmetric ciphers. Now a digital signature also provides integrity, but a digital signature actually provides more. Digital signature provides this property of non-repudiation. What does non-repudiation mean? That means you can't repudiate, right? Okay, so it means you can't say you never did this, okay? You can't say that never happened. Uh, and you don't get anything like that with symmetric keys. So let's, let's look at that next. That's kind of an uh, important property. Okay, but before we get to the non-repudiation, we have to look at a non-example of non-repudiation. Okay, so let's suppose uh, Alice orders 100 shares of stock from her favorite stockbroker, Bob, all right? Now, she wants to protect the integrity of this order, of course, so she computes a Mac, okay, to protect the integrity. Now, if you compute a Mac, what does that imply? It means that Alice and Bob must share what? They must share a symmetric key, okay? You have to have a shared symmetric key to make that work. Okay, now let's suppose before, um, you know, Alice orders the stock, tells Bob, buy this stock for me, Bob buys it, but before Alice has actually paid Bob for the stock, it crashes and goes to zero, okay? So the stock is totally worthless, and Alice says, hey, Bob, I never placed that order, what are you thinking, sending me this bill, right? Okay, so Alice is trying to worm out of paying for this uh, stock. And the question is, can Bob prove that Alice actually placed this order? Can he go before a court of law and say, you know, tell the judge she placed this order, she has to pay me for this hundred shares of stock, which are now worthless. What do you think? Why not? <laughs> well, you got me there. <laughs> Invent the whole thing since he knows the key. That's right. Bob knows the key that was used to compute the Mac. So Bob could have faked the whole thing. Okay, that's really the point here. Now, it's kind of funny because Bob knows he didn't fake the whole thing, but he can't prove that because he has the key. So he could have faked the whole thing. Okay, got that? Okay, now let's do a similar thing here. Let's suppose, similarly, Alice orders 100 shares of stock from Bob. But this time, instead of computing a Mac, she signs the order, okay, digital signature. Okay, so how do you sign again? Use her private key. So Alice uses her private key. Again, the stock drops before she pays for it, and Alice says, hey, I didn't place that order. Now, the question is, can Bob prove that Alice placed this order? And why is that? Because only Alice can sign using private key. That's right. Only Alice has the private key. So it's really the difference between the key being held by two people and the key being held by one. Okay? It makes a big difference here. So, of course, all of this, you know, is predicated on the fact that the keys are in the right place. Right? So only Alice has the private key. It hasn't been exposed. Similarly with the symmetric key, you know, only those two have it and Trudy doesn't and all that. But modulo those assumptions. Um, this uh, hurts. Okay, got that non repudiation. Okay, sign and encrypt versus encrypt and sign. So, first, just a quick reminder of the notation. I think we already covered this. Yeah, the square bracket tells us it's a private key operation, subscript, subscript tells us whose private key. The curly brackets tell us it's a public key operation, and again, the subscript tells us whose public key. And they're inverse operations, right, as long as it's the same pair of keys, right? So if you 
first use Alice's private key, which is a signature, you can undo that with the public key. If you first encrypt with Alice's public key, you can undo that with the private key. Okay. All right. So the question here is, we want confidentiality and integrity, or you know, non-repudiation. So can we get both of those using our public key system? Well, how do we get confidentiality? We encrypt, okay? So that's a public key operation. How do we get the non-repudiation? We sign, that's a private key operation. Can we do both? Yeah, why the heck not, okay? It's just more fun, just more operations to do, okay? So uh, we can use our public key cryptography to do both. We would first encrypt with whosoever public key we want to send to, and then we could sign with the private key to provide the non-repudiation. Or we could do it the other way. We could sign first and then encrypt. Well, does it matter which order we do these things in, right? In other words, Alice wants to send a message to Bob. She wants confidentiality, and we also want the non-repudiation. So Alice can first sign the message and then encrypt it with Bob's public key. Or she could first encrypt it with Bob's public key and then sign it. Can the order possibly matter here? You guys are kind of non-committal well, today, to put it mildly. If, if yeah. you um, sign beforehand, then at least you won't bother trying to decrypt it. If, you know, if you know it's not the right person, right? Po uh, possibly. Okay, so you're saying in this case, if you didn't expect something from Alice or you don't care rather, about this or message, or somebody tries to send, if somebody intercepts a message and tries to send something else, I don't, I don't know. Well, okay, hold, hold those thoughts. Those are kind of related to what. What? Okay, well, let's just look at sort of the trade offs between those two approaches. That's kind of the goal here. Okay, so let's suppose Alice um, and Bob are lovers and they're. So Alice sends a message to Bob I love you. And she wants to protect the confidentiality of this, right? Because nobody else should see it. And she wants the non repudiation because she never wants to change her mind or whatever. Okay, so she decides to do the uh, sign and then encrypt approach. Okay, so she signs it first and then encrypts it. Okay, everything's fine, except at some point later, Alice and Bob have a fight. Okay, so Bob decides to do something really malicious here. Okay, Bob can decrypt this part, right, because he has the private key. So now he's got this thing signed by Alice. He encrypts it with Charlie's public key and sends it on to Charlie. Now what does Charlie think? <laughs> Alice loves him, of course. Okay. <laughs> okay, so what's the problem here? Is this like public key stuff? It's like broken? I mean, this seems kind of weird. We shouldn't have these kind of problems. Would we have such a problem with symmetric key cryptography? In other words, could Bob take a message that's encrypted for him and then encrypt it with Alice's key that Alice shares with Charlie? No, he couldn't do that if it was symmetric keys. So there's something weird going on here just because it's public key cryptography. What is the weirdness here? Well, really, the problem is on Charlie's end here. Okay, Charlie's assuming a lot more than what he should really assume. Okay, all he knows is that this message was encrypted with his public key. Anybody could have done that public key operation. It's public, right? And all he knows about this thing is that it was signed by Alice at some point in time somewhere. It just happened that it was signed. It doesn't mean she intended it for him. The fact that it's a public key operation, when you encrypt the message to Charlie, means it could have come from anybody. Okay? So Charlie's really not getting the subtle issues here with public key. Okay, so let's suppose later on, Alice and Bob have made up, okay? But Charlie's still kind of peeved about this whole thing. Okay, now, Alice comes up with this great new theory. She's going to send it to her boss, Bob, and she's sure she's going to get some big promotion out of it, right? So she wants to protect the confidentiality so nobody steals her theory, and she wants to do the non-repudiation to make sure, you know, he knows it came from her. So she learned her lesson with the sign and encrypt, so this time she decides to encrypt and then sign. So she encrypts first, and she signs. She sends it off. Charlie intercepts the message, okay? He's still, again, he's kind of ticked off about this whole thing. And he knows, he doesn't, you know, he can't encrypt this, right? Because it's encrypted with Bob's public key. He can, however, 
undo this, right? Because that this requires Alice's public key. He does that, and he says, you know, it's very unusual for Alice to sign and encrypt something. This must be important. So just to cause trouble, I'm going to take whatever that is, which I can't read, and I'm going to sign it with uh, uh, my private key and send it on to Bob. So now what does Bob think? Charlie Rose. Charlie has a great new theory, and he gives Charlie a promotion, right? Okay. So OK, what's wrong in this case? <laughs> yeah, it's really Bob's making a mistake here. Uh, I mean, this is, a, again, a public key operation. Anybody could have done that. The fact that it came from Charlie, the fact that it's signed by Charlie tells you nothing. Okay? It's a public key operation. Anyone can do that. So, you know, these two problems are not like, you know, serious issues in the real world or anything. It's just to get you to thinking about uh, public keys. There's some subtle issues that arise when you use public keys. You need to say to yourself over and over again, the public key is public. <laughs> Once you get that down, some of these uh, issues become a little less uh, problematic.